morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunrise Easter service, Easter Sunrise service, First Baptist of Oka. Uh, we're up at uh, Valley View Cemetery off of Jacob Slattery Road. For those of you who couldn't be here this morning, the temperature in my car when I got here was about 26 degrees. So just got that for you guys. So, uh, so for those of you who are watching to get the full experience, uh, what you need to do now is get your camp chair or lawn chairs or whatever, take it outside and uh, watch from out there so you get a little bit of the sunrise service feel. Uh, those of you who aren't from our church, if you haven't been a part of this. This is something that we do traditionally uh, every year. We meet at a cemetery. And a cemetery is actually uh, an appropriate place to meet for a sun sunrise service. It is, a, it is a reminder of what Christ's resurrection has accomplished uh, for us. Uh, cemeteries everywhere are silent witnesses that God's warnings are true. If you remember, uh, goes all the way back to what God said to Adam. He said, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Then later on, he says to Ezekiel, the soul, or the one who sins, uh, will die. And then Romans 5, 12, Paul says to us, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. So where we're at actually here is at the gravesite of Vivian Tiffany, who just passed away this past November. This is her first Easter, being able to celebrate in the presence of our Savior of Christ. And for those of you who come here, you probably have brothers, sisters, family, family members, parents, grandparents, maybe even children who are buried uh, around in this cemetery or another place like this. We're going to move over uh, to where Alice and her husband were buried, Ralph Kinney, and we're going to read what happened, what, the, what hope we have for those who have passed, those who remain, the hope that we have in Christ and what he has accomplished for us. Uh, Pastor Bill is going to read. Uh, so I'm here with Pastor Bill, Kathy, and Isaac, our camera person, cameraman. Uh, and we're going to have Pastor Bill uh, read from Luke 23, 32 to 49. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, day you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breast and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching 
these things. Good Friday. Christ's death uh, for our sins on our behalf. And then comes a silent Saturday, a Sabbath day, and then Sunday morning. It, Easter un opens and unfolds in a cemetery. Its reality dawns upon the first women and then the disciples as the sun rises over the tomb where Jesus had been laid after being taken down from the cross. The women on the way to the cemetery to show their respects to the, de the, the dead end up having one of the most unbelievable cemetery visits experiences ever in the history of our world. The implications of this are still impacting us 2,000 years later. We're going to move over a little bit this way. Uh, this is where Carl Samuelson and actually his uh, son, Dean, uh, have been buried. And then Kathy's going to read what happened on the early morning of Easter. Luke 24, 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven, and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. So this is something so incredible that they really didn't think it was true. It couldn't be true. It couldn't possibly be true that the one whom they saw die was now risen. So what does this mean uh, for us? What does the resurrection of Christ mean for, for us on this Easter morning? The empty tomb is of Jesus Christ is witness that God's promises are true. Uh, long before he came to earth, David said that he would not abandon him, the Messiah, to the realm of the dead, that it would be fulfilled that in Christ, this hope of the resurrection. This is the message that Paul preached. Wherever he went, he would declare this promise. He says, this is in Acts 13, uh, where he's speaking to people who had not heard of this hope in Jesus Christ and his resurrection. He says, what God promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising Jesus, up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have become your father. God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God said, I will give you the, the holy and sure blessings promised to David, so that it also stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know 
that through Jesus the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Take care that what the prophets has said, had said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. So what does this promise mean for those who have passed and those, the future of us, those who have passed and us who remain? My brother was doing some archeo or genealogy research and he came across this will and testament from someone who made it uh, 1806 and it was put into effect eight years later, 1814. I don't know whether Aaron Mullins got up this early in the morning or if he'll ever see this, but I don't know whether wills and testaments are made in this way anymore. But I like the way that it starts because it's very true. It says, I, uh, in this case, James McAfee, being in a weakly condition, but sound in mind and memory, being fully convinced of the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death and a future state of existence beyond the grave, do commit my soul into the hands of God who gave it and my body to the dust to be buried in a decent and Christian manner by my ex executors in hope of obtaining through Christ Jesus a glorious resurrection from the grave. What's this glorious hope, this resurrection that he is he looking forward to? So Paul writes, What I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he, was, that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. And after that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born, referring to himself. And then Paul later on, writing to believers about the hope that remains of those who have passed and the expectation of what the resurrection means for us, he says to them in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come from down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first and after that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will be with the Lord forever so therefore encourage one another with these words and these are truly encouraging words recognizing that, that we have a hope. All who have passed, those are brothers and sisters in Christ, our family members who know the Lord, have this hope that we will be together with Christ forever. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. 
And then I like that question that he asks. Do you believe this? That's the question for all of us. That it is our faith in what Jesus has done. Accepting that, that gives us access to these promises. Now, we normally sing up here, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to spare uh, you that uh, we were, we were, it was a possibility, but uh, I encourage you to even w where you're at on your own, a Christ the Lord is risen today. It's a beautiful hymn of Easter, recognizing that the victory has been won by Christ. The sting of death is done. The promise of God's resurrection, of Jesus' resurrection, is that all of this, all of these silent reminders of death will one day be done away with as those who trust in Jesus live forever uh, with him. Let us end with a benediction here. This is a good one from Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every, everything good that you may do his will, working in us which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Son is arisen. He is alive and we have hope of eternal life. We'll, I think, end by giving you a good view of the uh, sunrise this morning. And then we'll see you guys at 9 o'clock for our morning service. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed.